Hey everyone, this is Justin Musgrove from Level Up Lunch. Today we are going to talk about filtering a collection. Uh, so often you get data from a data service or a database and you get all these Java objects and you want to kind of filter them down like you would in SQL. Um, so we're kind of we're going to look at that and, and how we can do that. We'll look at it from a traditional perspective and then we'll also look at how we can really make it work well with uh, Guava, which is a very interesting in, in how they have a great kind of utility uh, pieces to help us filter down collections. Uh, in the, in, for our example, we're going to look at states. So we might have all, we have 50 states in the United States, and we may want to just get Midwest states. So we'll create a state object, and then we'll create a state test that will walk us through how we'll trim it down and just get the Midwest region. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. I've already created a project, um, and we'll get this posted out on GitHub, filtering Java collections with Guava. And then the one thing we did also in our palm files, we imported the Guava dependency. And right now the current version is 15.0. Yeah, so we have the dependency of Guava and then also our J unit, which we'll kind of run a couple tests against. More from, you know, versus running a main, we're just going to run it in a, a, a test type format. So instead of you seeing me create all the project stuff and import dependencies, we've got that set up. So let's go ahead and create our first state class. We'll just create a, you know, Pojo object state. So we'll have a state object. Let's go ahead and create a couple variables in here. So we'll create a private string state code, private string name, private string, uh, let's call it region code, and then private string population. Population. Okay. So we'll gener generate our getters and setters. We'll select all of them and we'll do okay. A couple other things we wanna do is just create a constructor from the property. So we'll do a source, generate constructor from fields, select all those fields and then we're good to go there. And then for demonstration purposes, we want to actually override the two string, and we're gonna just send it to the system.out.println console, and then we'll just do that with two string. And you can piece this together. I prefer just to use objects. It's another class within Guava objects, and then uh, it's com.google.base, and then we'll do uh, two string helper, you can do this, and then we'll do a add. And then let's just do our state code. So we'll say state code, state code, dot add, and then we'll add another, uh, we'll get the name. And then we will do a two string so we can look at that object representation when we kind of spit it out to the console. All right, so let's go ahead and create a state test. So we'll create a new class called state test and we'll do finish. And then let's go ahead and create a collection. So we'll create a collection, we'll call it states. So we've got a list of state and let's call it states and instead of uh, I created some C data so you don't have to sit here and watch me type all this in so let's go ahead and just copy that over to our state test and we will do it before get that imported and do a list and save that and let's see what we're missing. So it looks like we got some errors. Let's go ahead and fix those errors. It looks like I have a wrong type. So let's just change this to int and have
have a population of int, change our data type here, and then we'll just regenerate our, uh, we'll just go like this, int get population and set and population. So we should be good to go. All of our errors are away now. Let's kind of look at this from a traditional perspective. Let's create a method. Um, we'll just do a test here. Public void get Midwest um, traditional. So this is kind of our traditional way. And everyone's probably done this before where they just create a for loop, they loop over the states and then they you know, filter based off the if statement. So let's go ahead and do that. So we'll create a state, uh, a list called Midwest states. We'll initialize that. Create a new array list and then for state in states, we'll loop through that and then we'll just do a system.out state. Okay, so let's go ahead and run this and let's see what it does. And like we expect, it'll just spit out the states that are there. So now <clears throat> we want to add if state dot region state dot get region code dot equals and we'll say is it midwest mdw so that's great and then we'll probably want to add that to our midwest states dot add add our state oops And then instead of printing out states, we'll just do Midwest states. So go ahead and run this again. And now it's filtered all down and it's added it to the Midwest states, which is great. I mean, it, it does what we need it to do. Seems okay, it works well um, for small instances, but. So let's add a couple more filters. So if we were to hypothetically add or um, state dot get population is greater than something, and then maybe we wanted to do, I don't know, whatever the value is, or state dot get name starts with, uh, let's say C. So as you can see, every time you add a conditional, um, your code, you know, your for, your if statement actually gets bigger. And so what happens is, is when folks are looking at this and they're like, oh, this is exactly what I want. I want to filter states. They just take what they have there and probably copy and paste that code with changing one little variable. So that leads to maintainability issues along with uh, copy, copy and recopy and paste and, and all those good things. So let's kind of take a look at how we can um, further that with Guava. Thanks to my dog in the background. So we'll do void git Midwest states with Guava. We're just going to touch on the collections to filter. Uh, there's there's a few other ones out there that which we'll, we'll kind of highlight here in a second, but they're very, very powerful. Just depends on what type you need. So um, let's just do this collection and we'll do state and we'll do MDW states equals collections two dot filter. And then your parameters on the filter are the collection you want to filter and the predicate. So predicate is, uh, you can just think of that as an if statement or a conditional that you want to apply to each element within your collection. So in this instance, we have a state, or we have states. Uh, let's go ahead and get this import fixed now. And then we'll do a new predicate. And we want it to be a state save that and then have our little help. We'll add um, uh, unimplemented methods and then it has a, uh, a boolean 
in here in which it'll actually call for each element. So in this instance, we want input dot get region code dot equals MDW. Okay, we'll add our semicolon, and then we'll go ahead and system dot out MDW states. So let's go ahead and run that, which we expect should give us the same results as the one above, which it does. We got Wisconsin, Iowa, Ohio, and South Dakota. So we've gone ahead and filtered that and applied that function. So why is that different? Well, one, one good thing is we can extract this um, or refactor this predicate into its own or outside the actual test. And we'd probably want to put this within the state class itself. But for now, we'll just kind of stick it out here. So we'll do predicate state. And maybe we want to say by Midwest region. Equals new predicate. And we should be good to go there. Oops, we're missing one thing here. OK. And then instead of having that all kind of baked in within the class itself, we can just paste in by Midwest region. And there you have it. So we've, we've taken that and we've made it so anybody could filter by Midwest region. That logic's in one spot. Um, and if, if someone else wants to apply that same logic, it's, it's a matter of just using the collections to dot filter um, and being able to um, filter that collection down. <clears throat> So a couple other ways, a couple other utilities that Guava has, and we won't go into too much detail, but there's iteratables.filter. There's also, there's a fluent iterable, which is really kind of neat. So think about if you did have that instance where you had, you want to get mid Midwest region, you wanted to get the population, and you wanted to get any states that started with C. So fluent interval is really kind of neat. So you start from a collection, in our instance as it states, and then you say um, filter, and then you would filter on one predicate, which is our Midwest region. And then we could apply another uh, predicate as well and do filter. And that kind of just daisy chains them all together, which is, which is very, very powerful. So um, in CAP, it, it's really kind of neat using the utilities that Guava has to filter collections, and hopefully this gave you another way to think about when you wanted to filter a collection. So thanks for joining.